If you're a veteran and you're ready to purchase a home, should you use a VA loan? And what does the process look like? So I receive calls from veterans all the time and the question that I continuously hear is, I've heard that the VA loan process is really hard. I've heard that, you know, it's a big mess. I heard it's gonna take longer. I've heard that the government isn't funding VA loans. And so in this video, what I'm gonna do is walk you through three main things to cover that you should know if you are thinking about getting a VA loan. And that is the different types of documents that you'll need, the process, and then the big differences in applying for a VA loan versus any other loan. I'm Megan Marsh with Keystone Alliance Mortgage. We are a mortgage broker and we love educating you so you can make the best decisions for yourself and your family financially when purchasing the biggest asset for you and your family. So if you're a veteran and you are wanting to buy that house, you 100% have not only earned the right to use your VA benefits, but you should get a VA mortgage. And the key to the process going smoothly and not being that different than any other loan is number one, where you get your mortgage, and number two, the person who's helping you get that mortgage. So the first area that we're gonna go over is the documents. How different is it when you are doing a mortgage as a veteran and like what other stuff do you have to get that other people don't have to provide when they're getting a mortgage? And so for the most part, you need to get the same documents that everyone else has to turn in, the W-2s, the pay stubs, the bank statements. The only thing that's different for you as a veteran is you have something which I'm sure you're familiar with called the DD-214. And you need to make sure when you are going to get your pre-approval, which is the first step in the qualifying process, you need to get that DD-214 and you need to provide it to that loan officer. If you're getting pre-approved and the loan officer hasn't asked you for this, that should be a red flag because for a loan officer and for a mortgage company, the DD-214 is what allows us to pull the second document that's different, which is your certificate of eligibility. And it's that certificate that tells us how much you're eligible for, if you have any eligibility, if you can use your VA benefits, it tells us your funding fee. And I've seen it all too often where someone applies to get a VA loan and they're weeks into the process and now they're pulling that certificate of eligibility and finding out something they didn't know up front. So that would be my number one tip for you is to make sure that that DD-214 is that one main document that you wanna make sure that you have. We can pull the certificate of eligibility uh, here within an office and any loan officer should be able to pull that for you, but you wanna have enough lead time. And we do have a video on the documents that you need when you're going through the loan process, so you can reference it and we'll put the link in the description below. And that really leads me into this second part and the second piece of this, which is what does the process look like when you're getting that VA loan? And really, I'm gonna kind of share this again, is what it looks the same as any other loan the only there are some differences that we're going to go through in the in the next section that i'm going to spell out where the differences are but the process is pretty similar for you as a borrower and the best way to see if you really want to dig in and see what you're getting yourself into when you buy a house and what the process is we do have a video guide that we created in a playlist and it's called a how to buy a home for the first time video guide. And we will also put that link in the description because you will go through that same process of getting pre-qualified, then you're gonna be looking at a home, then you're gonna put a contract in, and then you're gonna apply for your mortgage. The differences in the process when you're doing it are that you've gotta make sure you get those documents in so that we make sure that you're qualified through the VA. And then when you're looking for that house, this is where I find that there, where a lot of the misconceptions come in and it's because let's say there's all different types of people in the real estate industry with all different levels of experience and you know I'm sure there have been veterans that have had a really hard time getting a mortgage and I know personally there have been veterans that we've helped get loans in a matter of 14 days. So everyone's situation is very individual and so when you go start looking at homes the difference is that 
when you get an appraisal done during the process and an appraisal, not to be conf confused with your home inspection, the appraisal has some added layers of protection for safety. The VA wants to make sure that you're getting into a home that doesn't have safety issues, that they feel comfortable securing and backing with the bank. So let's say, for example, we've seen times where they want to know that the roof that's on the house at least has three years left on it. Um, and there's a whole list of items that I know sometimes the listing agents or a seller of a home is fearful, but I would not fear getting using a VA loan or if you're a real estate professional watching this, I think if it was up to me and I was selling my home, I would take a VA loan over a conventional loan. And the reason for that is because it is one of the only times in the whole process that when you get that appraisal, which is required by the bank, the bank wants to make sure the house is worth what you're going to be paying for this house. So let's say you're buying a house and it's 300,000. Well, on any loan out there, you go and you get an appraisal done. If it's a conventional loan and, you, and the house doesn't appraise, let's say it appraises for 280, well, there's nothing you can do about that. Yes, you can try to contest it, but there is no process. The VA loans are one of the only loans out there that has a process for if the appraisal is going to come in low. They have to notify the listing agent, they have to notify the lender, and that they have to give everybody 48 hours to give additional comps, to give reasons where the value is coming from. And if it still comes in low, that appraisal, you can request the VA to have an additional appraiser do what's called a desk review. It's one of the only loans out there in my entire career in the mortgage industry that the VA has backed and funded a house for more than what it appraised for. So it's one of those things that a lot of people just don't understand. So if you're selling your house, if you're a listing agent, you have a better chance fighting for that house when you have a VA loan involved. But besides that, a VA loan is going to follow the same get pre-approved, find that house, write your contract, apply for the mortgage, go through the underwriting process, and get your cleared to close and go to closing. So it follows the same process. So where the biggest difference is going to be with VA loans and how they're processed if you're getting a mortgage, the difference is in the details. So we're going to go through the details here in, in the third section and we're gonna really break down how the VA loan is different for you as a veteran. And so qualifying. So that whole pre-approval process is the same, but it's what we do here with your information that's different and how much it qualifies you for. So let me give you an example to help you understand a little bit better. So whenever we're qualifying any buyer who's looking to purchase a home, we are taking their income, the job that they're currently working at, and we are calculating the income. We're also making sure that as a home buyer that you are, you've had a work history and you can have gone to school, for example, let's say you went to school for education and now you just started a degree, you just started teaching in first grade, right? That's okay. And it's also okay if you're a veteran, but the VA loans are very strict they're very, very strict about your job history. So let's say that you're a veteran and you have been in the active military, uh, if it's here in the United States or if you've been overseas, and let's say that you have done mechanical work. That is what your specialty is. So you've done mechanical work as a veteran and while you're active. If you now go and you are on the civilian side and you have employment, if you, for example, take a job as a mechanic, let's say, at a car dealership, you can have a job offer, you can only be working for a week or a month, and you will get pre-qualified based on that income. But if you go take a job and you've only been working for a month or you get an offer, let's say you get offered a position at a, as a, a loan processor at a mortgage company, they will not allow you to get qualified for a VA loan. They want to ensure that veterans have been in the same line of work for 
two years. So it has to correlate to what you were doing when you were in the military. It has to tie together somewhat, somehow that those skills are transferring to your new job and you have to prove that through a letter of explanation. And we don't find that the other programs are as strict. With FHA loans, for example, you can have, you can be in different lines of work. It's more relaxed, but with VA loans, that is just one thing that they really, really wanna make sure of as a veteran. So just think about when you are going and becoming a civilian and getting a job, if you wanna get a house, you just need to plan ahead for that piece. The second part that's different when you're qualifying is how, you're, how much you're qualified for and what they look at. So for most people, we're taking what your income is, you take a percentage of it, and you have, we have to subtract out the debts that are on your credit report. So things that are on your credit report would be car loans, student loans, credit cards, personal loans. Those are the things that go into your what's called your debt to income ratio. Those are what go into how much you qualify for. And if you're a veteran, there's one other piece. And I've seen this missed before. So when you're doing that pre-approval, it's really important that the loan officer that you're talking to is asking you about the daycare or the childcare costs. So it's normal when you're getting pre-qualified for your loan officer to ask you if you pay child support, right? Well, let's say you don't pay child support. Let's say your family is together and you have two small children and they go to daycare and every month you're paying $500 for daycare expenses for your household. So what happens with VA loans is in addition to us figuring out your debt to income ratio and the payment you qualify for. So let's say you qualify for a $2,000 payment. Well, if the loan officer doesn't take it a step further and asks you what your daycare costs are, that's when it could come back later and bite you in the process. So we need to make sure we ask those questions up front to every veteran that we're working with because we have what's called a residual income calculation. And I do like residual income. I think it's a great way to look at income and it's a great way to figure out what people qualify for because it's taking your total income and subtracting out the debts that are on your credit report, but they're, they're actually factoring in how much taxes you're actually paying and then subtracting out your debts and then they're they're looking at other things how much do you have to pay in child care expenses and how much do you have to pay for in utility bills and they have an equation for it and so not only when we're working with veterans do we need to figure out what you qualify for based on just your straight debt to income, but we have to do this other calculation called the residual income calculation, and you have to meet a certain level. Uh, so it's just one of those important pieces when we're helping veterans, and you know, you just be, need to be honest about the costs and what you're spending and what your household expenses are, but there's something that can help with that, which is if you're married, your spouse, and they work full time, uh, the number that we use to qualify you can change if they're also supporting the household. Lastly, VA loans are a little more lenient when it comes to debt to income ratios. Uh, for a conventional loan, most borrowers can't go above a 43 to the absolute top I've ever seen on a conventional loan is 49%. A VA loan, we have seen approvals on VA loans go up to I've seen them as high as 59, 60%, which seems really high. And it's the job as a loan officer to make sure that we're advising and making sure as a family and as a borrower that you understand the expenses you have. And sometimes those debt to income ratios can be higher if let's say there's income we can't use. So if you're a veteran and you have, let's say your full-time income that you're receiving from your job, but then you also have, let's say you know you're gonna start receiving VA disability benefits, but you don't have them yet and you're purchasing and you know they're gonna at least be, because you have a system you can look in, you know you're at least gonna be receiving $1,000 a month. Well, if that's not factored into your ratios, that's why the VA allows some leniency and it allows for higher debt to income ratios, which means there's more wiggle room so that VA loans aren't gonna get denied as much as 
you're going to see conventional loans or maybe FHA loans. And so it just gives you more flexibility because the goal is to help you as a veteran get into a house and everyone in the whole process from the Veterans Administration to the banks and underwriters to the loan officers are trying to help you get into a home and help you use the benefits that you have earned and that you should use when you purchase a home. We already talked about the appraisal differences and how you can overcome an appraisal coming in low. Another huge misconception is how many VA loans can you have? I remember the first few years when I was in the mortgage business before I learned how VA loans worked, I did not realize that you could have more than one VA loan. And I know that there are still situations out there, but as a veteran, you can have more than one VA loan. You can have more than two VA loans, but it's based on your eligibility. It, it's based on how much entitlement you have, which is where it comes back to that DD-214 and your certificate of eligibility and making sure that the person you're working with is experienced and knows how to calculate this correctly. And if you are going online and you're searching and you're putting in VA loans, lenders who do VA loans, I wanna give you just a quick forewarning. Okay. There are companies out there that name themselves something that sounds like they would be the VA. There is not a single lender out there that is the VA. Every single lender out there is a for-profit company that chooses the name that they have named themselves. For more information, or if you wanna get pre-approved for a VA loan, there is a link down in the description. You can also visit our website at www.keystonealliancemortgage.com. You can also go check out our Facebook page. We have Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget, we also have the links down below so you can go check out our video series on the mortgage process, the documents that you're gonna need, or what an underwriter is gonna ask for during the process. Oh. And don't forget, if you found value in this video or if you know a veteran who needs to hear this video because they're looking for a house, then please share the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you can continue to get more information, more value, and educate yourself before purchasing the biggest asset that you will ever purchase in your life.